And, 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 and now, straight from the Law Abiding Biker Media Studio, out of sunny Yakima, Washington, we bring you another episode of the number one listen to motorcycle podcast. We're in your head. We're in your head. We're in your head. We're in your head. Hola, papi. Ven y escucha otro episodio del Lab. Hey, Bikeaholics and listeners alike. The show is still going strong because of a lot of hard work and your support, of course. Thanks to all those loyal listeners and true friends of the show that have supported us or are supporting us. For less than a coffee a month, you can help support us too and put a little fuel in the law-abiding biker gas tank to make sure this show keeps moving on down the road. So, calling all law-abiding bikers, head over to our Patreon page and take action today. You can do so at lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Oh, did I mention there's benefits too? From all your friends at lawabidingbiker.com, we appreciate each and every one of you. God bless and ride safe. Oh yeah, feel it. Feel it, feel it. Mm-hmm, LD. In the house. Welcome back, you freaking bikeaholics. This is the podcast for the motorcycle majority, the Big MM, also known as the... 99% baby. a boy. I got a question, LD. What the heck is everybody waiting for? Mount up already. Get out there and ride, baby. Let us take you for a ride. Welcome back, guys. Of course, this is Ryan Erlacher with LawAbidingBiker.com and your high tech redneck. Oh, yeah. And who do we got in the studio? The one, the only. Yeehaw, yeehaw. <laughs> it has been at least a minute, if not two minutes, since you have been in the studio, dude. In fact, last time you were in the studio, we were still down in the little tiny office. I hadn't moved up here to the bonus room. So what say you? What do you think? What do you think? Bonus room? You didn't have half this equipment last time I was in there. <laughs> True. True. So it's been like eight months, probably. I, th- I think so. Well, maybe not quite that long, but it's been a while. Last yeah. time I was in was with uh, Popeye. Yeah, right. I think. With, uh, um, yeah, it was. And that was before, even before we had uh, uh, Jeff in the studio, I believe. It was. I couldn't even remember when you last came, but it's super good to have you in the studio, man. Um, sitting and sporting uh, your uh, iPhone there and... and your your uh, PBR and kicked back on the sofa, dude. This is good. This he, is good. Life is good, man. So, um, yeah. So uh, he uh, we get do uh, have LD in the studio. Got the flat screen up there for you now. So he gets to check out all the new equipment, and we'll see how things go here. So uh, LD texted me last minute tonight, which was great, and uh, said he was available because we need to spit some podcast, man. Um, it's busy, busy times, guys, right now, and you all know. We're doing the SOA Sons of Anarchy episodes in between the regular as if I didn't have enough to do, but you know what? You guys are worth it and uh, I'll keep working my tail off to try to get this stuff out to you. LD, just uh, say hi. Say hi. What have you been up to? What, what's been, uh, why you been so busy, man? Were you in prison? Uh, yeah. Small, some time? small stint in county. <laughs> no, I've got, uh, let's see, back when... I really first went off the radar. I was coaching two baseball teams, and then over the summer, that's right. You were in the. I, I yeah. was. I'm playing softball in the summer, but I don't know. Just vacations and whatever. And now I'm coaching football, and I have a kid in soccer. So I have two games on Saturdays: soccer wow. Wednesday, Friday, and football Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Oh yeah, that'll keep you busy, dude. Yeah. It's, right, do you it's think busy. you're going to get to do any Sons of Anarchy episodes this year? Or not? You didn't get to do any last year either, did you? No, I, I'm not good at all the projections and all that good uh, stuff. So I leave that to the professionals. Yeah, whatever. You like watching them though. You just you're saying you just don't like doing the I do. projections. And last night I coached football. Got home, was dead tired. The wife hasn't seen the first episode oh. this year yet. So we oh she held hasn't off. no oh man she hasn't had time. So we I held off in, in her honor. I will. That's nice. I will not do. Uh, I won't give anything away or any spoilers. All I'm saying, dude, is the second episode is as good, if not better. It's it's just weird, dude. Um, you'll like it. You'll like it. Hey, we would just want to thank real quick, loyal listener and supporter for sending me some t-shirts. Um, I wanted to get out this before, but it is Scott Ladd of Grand Rapids, Michigan, hooked up with me on LinkedIn. 
and uh, super, super good guy. We've been communicating, so thanks, Scott. And he went to Sturgis 2014 and brought me back two long sleeve t shirts. And uh, I actually post them on our Facebook page. Really awesome t shirts. So, okay, I've kept it a secret. I haven't even shown you. No. Um, I'm completely redesigning. I have an artist working on it. It's been in the works for over a month, completely rebranding the entire law abiding biker design, the logo. Uh, an artist is actually drawing it, and of course, then we're going to scan it in to to PNG and and, and all that, and uh, whatever that is, dude. <laughs> yeah, whatever PNG is. Yeah. Um, and then we'll we'll put it in JPEG and all kinds of stuff. But it is freaking. It's not colored yet, but what? he sent me an email, and I'm not showing anybody because I want it to be done. But those people, I have a list, and I've emailed those people, and there's still some I need to email the audience out there those really, really loyal listeners that have really been involved, um, have, uh, uh, I'm going to, I have their, uh, emails and I've emailed them and I have shirt sizes. So when that's done, guys, just know it's in the work. I'm not stalling. It's, I want, I've the artist, I want it to be perfect. So you guys are going to get some lab t-shirts when I'm done. And then we've got something coming up a little bit later in the fall. Um, where if uh, I'm working on something where if uh, listeners sign up for a specific, uh, somewhat of a premium deal, they will get, uh, hopefully get, you know, I'll have that in the package that that's one of the, uh, rewards is, is a lab t-shirt with this new logo. You guys will know when it comes out. Cause I'm going to, I'll put it, replace everything. So it's awesome, dude. Really awesome. So thank you, uh, Scott for sending that. Um, thanks Scott. Appreciate it. Next time send, um, in extra large. So Ryan can't wear them. <laughs> dude, I, I wear extra large. Oh, you fatty. <laughs> At your short stature, you wear an extra large. I do. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's a short, short and wide. Um, yeah. <laughs> So do you want to do a, a couple donations here, LD? We, we uh, really appreciate it, guys. Your ongoing support, as I stated, we are working our tails off to get all this content out to you. So thank you so much, LD. Do you want to go with a couple donations? Ronald Sheely of Winchester, Kentucky. Thank you very much. We appreciate the support. Robert De- DeBats? Yeah, that's how I say it. D-E-B-A-T-S of Val... Jeez. This guy's Good killing job. me. Way to go. Way to go. <laughs> Fell apart on that one. <laughs> Valparaiso, Pari, Pariso. Mm-hmm. That's how I'll say it. Valparaiso, Indiana. Indiana. Substantial donation. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. And Kurt Wagner from our neck of the woods in Friday Harbor, Washington. We appreciate the support. Oh yeah, Friday Harbor, dude. There you go. Thanks, guys. And of course, if you want to support us and you love this weekly content and you can't wait for it, and sometimes more than weekly content. You can support us. You can, as Lurch say, throw some shekels away and uh, put a little fuel in the lab gas tank so we can keep this baby going down the road. Thank you guys so much for that. So there we go. Now we got a couple new iTunes reviews I just want to cover real quick. And uh, there we go. Um, do you want to do the first one there? From GW Terry one U.S. It's a United States because I get them uh, different okay. markets. Yeah, these are all U.S. He gives us five stars, and he says, this is a great podcast. I cannot possibly listen to everything I have learned, or list everything I have learned, listening to these guys sitting around BSing. <laughs> <laughs> and now, BSing on a couch, which is going to get even deeper. Oh, yeah, real bad. Remember? No, but that's, that's super nice, man. From August 27th, 2014, he left that. And that's really good to know, guys, um, when you guys send feedback like that, that people are really appreciating. They're actually learning stuff, and we're helping in some way. So thanks for that hit the next oh monkey girl monkey girl oh, that kind of gets me excited it dude. does i'm not gonna lie to you dude six five seven oh. five. Oh yeah monkey, go ahead I, sorry. I like it she's from the u.s as well and she provides us with five stars oh i dig <laughs> she provides us with five stars and the subject is great podcast from august 16th 2014 she says stumbled upon the law-abiding biker youtube videos recently and as a fellow leo shout out Oh, yeah, yeah. And Mm -hmm. new Harley owner found the videos great and informative. Answered a lot of questions, ideas I had about my 2014 Street Glide. Nice bike. Yeah. Once I found that you guys had a podcast, which I have never listened to podcasts or even had the app installed, I started listening and have enjoyed every show. Great to hear the info and advice you guys pass on. Keep up the good work, fellas. Thanks, monkey girl. She brings up a good point. And... Thank you there again. The YouTube channel is booming, guys. So lawabidingbiker.com slash YouTube. Tons of free stuff. 90% if you're a first-time listener, literally. And I'm being nice. It's probably 95% of our content is completely free to you guys. 
completely free. We sell very little. Um, but uh, yeah, head over to the YouTube channel there. That's how she found us. And then even cooler, first time podcast, because there's a lot of people that have heard podcasts. It's it's like I tell everybody, it's a weekly online radio show. It's That's it. It's a streaming radio show um, with the new, very exciting for podcasters, because I stay in that community, obviously. Um, I listen to a lot of guys in that community coming out on the new version of uh, iOS for Apple devices, uh, along with the new iPhone 6 release, is a brand new iOS version. You know how some on your iPhone now you get it? A lot of stuff comes free, like, or I mean, it's, you can't get rid of it, like stocks and weather, right? Right. right. They're, they're, they're apps that, that they're there to stay. Uh, Apple is really bumping up the podcast industry and they're going to make that an app you can't get rid of. So oh, awesome. when people get these new phones and this new version on their home screen, just like the stocks is going to be this podcast and all they got to do is click on an open, they say it's going to bring millions of more people just because they're forced to look at it now and go, what is that? And then right. they're going to find shows huge huge for the podcast industry so i'm looking forward to that and there her she found it on her own because the youtube channel she found out we had a podcast too so there you go why don't you hit the next one buddy just one thing for monkey girl tell the folks you work with kick them over to the podcast especially if they ride there you go teach them how to push that little button it's actually simpler than dialing into your radio station you just hit it and listen to the new episode i don't know why people haven't got it yet but there you go all right, this next guy, not sure I agree with him, but MRT1954 from the U.S., five stars, <laughs> and uh, he says, great podcast is his subject. August 5th, 2014, he says, lots of great, no BS information. Awesome. I think, when I listen to the podcast, it's about 75% BS <laughs> because I know these guys and I know right. what they're saying, and I'm thinking, that didn't happen like that. What the hell are they talking about? Oh, that's hilarious, dude. But I'm glad that we can entertain as well as give good information at the same time. Absolutely. Which makes it infotaining at a boy you remember you remember man awesome do you want to go over this one or do you want to move on to other stuff do you even want to cover this it's up to you dude it was one out of wow. it, it's a negative one and it's one out of i mean 99.999 percent of our reviews are good so i don't know if it's worth going over but no i think we should all right. show that we're not uh biased yeah. all right there you go, go so ahead. surfer ski here i'm just going to read it to you guys and then i'm not you know here here's the deal i'm not going to spend an entire podcast or or even very long at all but uh this was i think i can address just a few issues and uh if you don't want to listen don't listen because it's free <laughs> you know that's what i don't yeah. get so you know what this is free and i spend uh 14 hours a day on my days off doing this stuff so uh, see ya uh appreciate all the listeners we do have the loyal listeners but you know what yeah until you're paying for it uh there you go um surfer ski is this guy's name from the u.s market two stars he gives us on august 22nd 2014 his subject unfortunately limited for something to claim to be for all law-abiding bikers. And of course, you guys do know that this is for all law-abiding bikers. And we have tons that listen. And we've ridden with listeners, haven't we, LD? We've ridden with listeners with we different have. models of bikes. So we the, rode with the, uh, what did uh, Greg have? He had a... Yeah, he had a STS Honda. Mm -hmm. STS Honda. Uh, old police bike, yeah. Yep. And then the, the guys, guys from, from the Seattle. west side. Yep, the guys from the west side. We did. They were on all uh, sport touring bikes. There's right. Four or five of them. Right. Yep. And we're an hour a week, you know, we cover what we can, but we uh, have guys that ride with us every <laughs> summer on our big trip. One went from a Honda VTX 1800. And then this year the he Yamaha. got a new, uh, he had a new, uh, victory. <laughs> and then we had a 1986 Yamaha Virago that motored with us this summer. <laughs> did, we did dude. bat an eye. <laughs> so for, he, the only complaint he had was in the morning, he said, you guys fire up your bikes and go. Right. Yeah, it's called fuel injection. We don't have to let it idle for 20 minutes. So True. His bike was choking and dying trying to leave the parking lot. We just didn't think about it. But um, Yeah, that's true. I didn't even think about that, why he was starting it so early. Yeah, carbureted. Um, so here, here's his. Let me just read it to you guys. I'm going to get through it here, and then we'll address a couple things. It's in this guy, you know, hey, thanks for sending it. You know, we want all, all feedback. If you guys want to rate us, head to lawabidingbiker.com slash iTunes. It'll take you directly there. It is so easy to do, guys, and it means so very much to us, really. Um, even if you can't financially donate right now, um, the, just doing a free uh, review for us helps us out a lot. So this is here's what he says. This really should be called the, and I assume this guy listened to like one podcast. So there right. you go. He tuned in one time, but whatever. This really shouldn't be called the look at me. I or, or This should be called, quote, look at me. I own a Hardy Davidson podcast. Now, I don't have anything against Hardys except that they are really crappy off-road. Okay, we agree. 
Um, I don't take mine off road. We don't take it off road, but thank you. <laughs> uh, we're, we're aware of that we're not sport. We're not uh, in the back country. Okay, I get a uh, motocross bike for that, and in the back country. Yeah, I don't ride in the back country if, unless it's paved. <laughs> so. <laughs> However, he says, last time I checked, those categories were included in the 99% of law-abiding bikers. And absolutely, surfer ski, you are correct. You are included in the 99% of the motorcycle however, majority. <laughs> however, we are talking to street bike type people. Right. Uh, that You need an enduro or something to go off-road most of the time. Right. Yeah. If you want a dirt bike podcast, go listen to a dirt bike podcast. There you go. Thank you. This is uh, Our title is Law-Abiding Biker Street Motorcycle Biker Podcast. Street Motorcycle Biker Podcast. So I don't know what you're expecting. Um, if you own a Harley and watch, want technical advice, I think these guys probably have some great info and videos that re- that they are happy to sell you. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Here's this guy. That's why I say he's listened to one podcast. Guys, nine, you all know our loyal listeners, 95% of our content is free and I bust my ass. Um, so here's this guy listens to one and probably heard me talk about a boombox video or something. It's like, yeah, I sell. I have like seven videos for sale. I have like 50 videos that are free. So Listen, yeah, listen again. The problem is, is the one he wanted cost money. <laughs> right, exactly. The very one he wanted, yeah. I think these guys probably have some great info and videos that they are happy to sell you. Okay, in the meantime, while you are waiting to hear all of the content that is promised, be prepared to spend 95% of your time listening to how terrific guys are about providing content, about how cool the technical equipment they are begging you them to buy is. Yeah. Begging you to help them buy it. Yeah. Again, it's free, bro. It's free if you... uh want to make it better i don't see any donations from you but uh thank you to the audience that has and our audience knows the audio quality um you know it's really if you listen i listen to some old episodes dude even from back after i was in the closet there and and to to the other equipment dude our audio quality has went through the roof when i listen to other podcasts i'm like we are in the top notch and and we want to bring that to you guys and thank you so much and that's because of you guys um i'm not out uh eating steaks trust me the very little uh we get we appreciate and we put it right back in here so early on oh here if you could oh yeah and about what great writers they are they apparently we talk about we're great writers okay early on there was we are pretty good writers but there's a lot better but we we rip pretty good all right early on was some good conversations and tips about forming a motorcycle club although i think it is ironic that these elios want to distinguish themselves from one percenters and then they try so hard to look just like them Hey, what if the one percenters are looking like us, bro? Hey, the three piece patch is a motorcycle thing. That's not a one percent thing. Again, a guy that listened to one podcast knows nothing about clubs, knows nothing about clubbing. Um, yeah, we you know what? You can wear whatever you want, bro. All right. Unfortunately, they claim to be representing the majority, but reality is if you don't think Harley's tattoos and drinking are cool, then there probably isn't much here for you. What's not cool about Harley's tattoos and drinking? I don't know. I'm still trying to find the negative there. Yeah, you just hit it on the nail, bro. Uh, Yeah, you'd have fun in the studio. That's for sure. Certainly, there are other motorcycle podcasts out there that actually talk about industry news, events, results, products, and something other than Harley's. Well, there you go, bro. Go find yourself another podcast. um, Or you can always tune back in here. We'd love to have you. Um, But uh, yes, there are other podcasts. I'm sorry, I'm not going to sit here and talk about motorcycle racing and who won the latest drag race because that's not what this podcast is about. We tell our audience useful information about the motorcycle world and what's current and what's uh, what's going on with with bikes and and you know clubs and rides and things like that. You know what? If you want to go join the circuit, then go join the circuit. So um, yeah, not not what we're really about. So. All right, so you learned what our podcast is about. There you go. I had great hopes for this podcast because the promises were so enticing. Unfortunately, it hasn't delivered much meaningful conversation or dialogue, certainly not enough to fill more than 10 minutes a week. All right, there you go. You have any, we pretty much kind of- Let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. There you go, guys. Fair and balanced here. We'll tell you our negative feedback. We we gave it out there because it came to us, so. All right, let's talk about, uh, oh, let's talk about the, uh, real quick here, the boombox, guys. We won't spend a lot of time on it. I put out a blog- on the boombox iPhone, everybody knows the 6 and the 6 Plus came out. The 6 is a little bit bigger than the 5S. The 6 Plus is a 5.5-inch screen, so it's a little bit herkin. And uh, I was email from Bill Moody. Thank you, listener, uh, Bill Moody. All right, here's the blog. So if you guys want to get it, it's lawabidingbiker.com slash boombox iPhone and the number 6. I also did a Facebook post. And basically what's going on here, guys, is uh, Bill, Bill Moody here sent me some pictures. He actually took some templates that you can get online. He cut out some little wood deals. Here, I'll pull it up for you, LD, so you can see what I'm talking about. And he pulled up, he uh, 
cut out some wood deals and then he tried to uh, fit it in the boom box. So this is wood oh, here. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so he made a replica out of wood of the different sizes. Now he says, um, and, and thank you so much. This is the community getting involved, guys. This is Bill Moody getting involved with Law Abiding Biker. And I put this out for him on my blog and on Facebook. So you guys can email me stuff. If it's useful information like this, I'll get it out to the community. Or you can post it on Facebook yourself and I'll make sure and share it. So it's this right, right yeah. here. We'll earn Bill Moody a t-shirt. There you go. Remind me when we're done here because I'm not writing. Uh, Bill Moody. We'll get Bill Moody t-shirt. There you go. Bill Moody t-shirt. I'll get your address, bro. I'll email you. So he says the iPhone 6 will fit in the jukebox compartment on the new uh, touring models, guys. Uh, but it will. you have to take the foam out and it will just fit with the lightning connector, you know, connected to it for charging purposes. The iPhone 6, guys, eh, not going to happen. Um, it will fit in there but it won't the way let, let me look to make sure i'm talking uh the, the iphone the 6, 6 plus fit, the 6 plus will not okay the 6 plus will fit but it just won't you can't plug in the the uh is that right the iphone 6 will go into the usb compartment okay so it will go in without the foam insert but there isn't enough room to attach a charge cord so it'll fit in there but you can't charge it so so my other question is, i guess if you can't plug into charge can you plug in the auxiliary port or do you bluetooth your music you just bluetooth your music okay. Yeah, right. It I just, don't have that set up. So I right. On those long trips, though, yeah. um, you know, not being able to charge it kind of sucks. But I have another cigarette lighter, and I may just get, which is a great, perfect segue, dude. How about that? Um, that's why I may get the tech mount. Um, and you guys probably heard us talk about the tech mount, and we strongly suggest that you get it. We put it on LD's bike, and we put it on uh, uh, Chewy's bike. So now that the, I'm getting the iPhone 6, and so I'm going to need a different, because I do like on our long trips to have it plugged in. Um, so I'll probably get get the tech mount, the tech gripper, and put it on the handlebars. That way I can ride and I'll still be able to charge my phone. See, Does that make sense? Right. And this has opened up new riding opportunities for me being able to mount my phone up to the handlebars because I take call every so often. I'm on call every other week. True. And yeah. so... I, if I go out and ride, I, I have to answer my phone. They're paying me. So you got to see it. So I've got to be able to see it. I don't necessarily have to answer it, but if I right. can wait till the next good spot to pull over and call them back, that's what I need to be able to do. So it, having it right there on the handlebars, I can at least see if something comes in from work. So awesome. awesome. I've been able to ride a lot more on the weekends I'm on call. That's cool. That's good to know. Um, and of course, we do have an affiliate with Tech Mount guys. We've used them. We did the v review videos. Um, if you need a cell phone or GPS mount solution, guys, you bikeaholics out there, that's right. Mm -hmm. We approve it. Great looking mounts, good prices, fast shipping. We have an affiliate over at Power Sports US. That's lawabidingbiker.com slash Power Sports US. That's right. Mm -hmm. No additional cost to you. We do get a small commission for each sale. You guys really need to get involved in the community over on our Facebook page. It's growing. It's huge. Lawabidingbiker.com slash Facebook. It's an open right now. Um, it's open for, for anybody. And we talk about a lot of stuff over there and I put this out there and then a loyal listener, Mike Petri also involved in our Facebook group said his galaxy, he told the community his galaxy note two won't fit either. So there you go. You Android guys, droid, droid, no comment. All right. Um, there you go. So you, you, uh, Android guys no, Mike, Mike, he's good people. We just tease about that stuff. So, um, get involved with that face group, uh, Facebook group over there, guys, tons, tons of information. All right, let's talk a little bit about this. We talked a little bit about it before uh, we got going here. So let's see if we can wade through this LD. Little tech, techy stuff. Facebook forcing clubs. You'll be interested in this if you guys have a club. Um, uh, or run a side business for that matter. Right, exactly. Like a uh, law-abiding biker. I started a Facebook page, but but uh, don't start a personal page. It was all good back in the day. Yep. Mm -hmm. So Till the money. There you go. You want to? Why don't you open this and, and explain what we're going to talk about here, brother? Okay. So if you want a personal Facebook account, just like any other person would have, which we did with Sworn Few. So tell them how we started Sworn Few. So we started Sworn Few with a personal Facebook page where we had to approve friends. So initially, we could kind of take a look at a friend's page and see if that's somebody we wanted to be associated with us or not. And let me jump in there real quick. The other thing I did when I started it because it was a personal page. So like the last name was sworn few MC. The first name was mother chapter. And so it came up as sworn few MC. Does that make sense? Right. Right. And because it was a personal page. Um, we did that and we were been good for several years. So go ahead. Well, then Facebook decided they're not getting enough money from sponsors. Oh. <laughs> so they switched us to a, 
like page. So a like page is a page where somebody has to go to the page and actually like it. The problem is, is with a like page, you're not going to see everything up in your timeline. Say the word. Say the word. Algorithm. <laughs> say it. Come on. Algorithm. There you go. The algorithm. Uh huh. The algorithm was all screwed up. <laughs> and so we lost uh, <laughs> lost all our photos, the timeline, so the stuff that we'd put up previously, everything was gone. So after a couple of years, I don't know if we got too big. That's what put us on the radar. I for, think so. Yeah. And so they switched us. They made us switch to a like page. So now our we put a post out. Say we have 1,500 people that like us. It'll show you the amount of people that see it. And sometimes it's like 200 out of that 1,500. Oh, yeah. And then you have to pay to boost it so that everybody will see it. Yes, you've got to have a PayPal account. I do for lab media for the podcast here. You have to boost it and you can pay 5, 10, 15, 20 to get that to put. So when you guys open up Facebook and your feed, um, you're not going to see, you see very little. And I've talked about this in the past. You actually see very little. It's whatever Facebook thinks you like. And it's based on how many, what pages you've used. So if you page law, you, you uh, like stuff and comment on law abiding biker Facebook page a lot, well, then it's going to be, they're going to force it into your feed when you open it up. Um, Inter- that's the al- that's the algorithm. Interact mm-hmm. with the page, and you'll see more of our stuff. Exactly, and we uh, have another little trick for you. Um, if you go to the Facebook page, lawabidingbiker dot com Facebook, where where was that we could go? Do you uh, remember? You'd have to go to the yeah. Let me let's go to a page I like here. Bear with and us, where, guys. And where the uh, page comes up and it says like, click on that, and some options will come down. And right. So in those options, so where it says liked, there's a little down arrow next to it. Click on get notifications so that you're getting notifications. Now that'll only last you so long. You have to interact with the page to continually get them. So make sure you're interacting. Awesome. Um, very good. LD gets that from his uh, uh, wife and she's a social media gal. And uh, so so she called her before the podcast and, and got that from her. So good, good deal on that. So get notifications. And I assume it'll come up in your globe. You guys know what I'm talking about. Notifications under your globe. Every time there's a new comment on that page, I think it will notify. I'm going to test that that for you guys. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Awesome deal. All right. So, um, yeah, get involved over there. Oh, so yeah, I think what it is, LD, is I think Facebook, I remember hearing this on another podcast. Once you get an X amount of likes and we have thousands on the sworn few MC page, Facebook will force you because they don't feel it's a personal page anymore. It needs to be. And of course, what does it come down to money, money, Facebook wants your money. And if they feel you have too many friends um, and uh, they want some of your money and they want to force you to pay to boost posts so people can see your stuff. Well, of course that's great. If you have a business, you know, I'll boost a post now and then on law abiding biker. I will pay for those uh, sometimes, but I'm not going to, we're not going to do it for swarm few MC. It's a nonprofit motorcycle club. I don't care if people see everything, right? Right. So that's why it kind of pisses me off um, about them doing that. And they did force us out. They forced us. They didn't give us a chance to get any of our photos out. One day we just got up and they had a thing there and they said, you need to switch it. And we could do nothing. They you f- clicked on switch it. And you had to. And that was it. Right. That's it. And I had to set it all back up. And I ha- luckily I'm good with you know Facebook pages and stuff. I run several, but um, it, you know, I had to set it up for our club that way. And so if you guys, my advice to you now, knowing that don't start, um, if you're starting a club and you're starting a Facebook page, just don't do a personal profile, just do the page. Yeah. You're not going to pay to boost it. People will see it if they want, or like me, I just visit some pages because I know it's not in my feed. Right. I know the algorithm is not pumping it there. So I'll just go to those pages that I really like to catch up. But don't start a personal page because in about a year or two, when you get a thousand likes or two thousand likes um, or friends, I mean, then they're going to force you, and you're going to lose all your history. You're going to lose all your photos, and they don't give if you're a rat's a, ass. If you're a personal page now, go back your stuff up. If you want it back, ever good call because we don't know what the magic number is. I don't know what it was before, and you'll just wake up one day and they'll say you are too large and you need to switch and f you. That's basically what they told. There's a big finger on the screen. There's a big middle <laughs> big finger middle and some finger. guy bending over spreading his cheeks and he's like, you need to switch. Oh gosh, dudes. But I wanted to get that out to you guys because it happened to us and to let you know maybe the direction you need to go or just switch to a page now before that happens. Have you talked to uh, Big River about that? No, but they're a page. They started. Oh, they are as a like page. That's right. right. They are a like page. Yep. So they started because that's what we had them do in the prospect period and they didn't change it, which is good. It's just kind of the way Facebook is going now. All right. Here's a little uh, Facebook comment since we're talking about it. This is public, of course. Ron 
Trusty, and we want to thank you. And this is just a random one. I pulled lots of people comment over there. So understand I can't read every comment, guys, but I do like to throw out to the community and tell you how much we appreciate it, Ron. Trusty. He says, one of the best websites I have used. And of course, he's talking about lawabidingbiker.com. If you want a Harley, you need to check this guy out. All right. Thank guys, you. it's not just him. True. I'm here right now. I may have mistyped here. I'm yeah, put, you screwed I'm that up. I'm putting S. Here you go. Yeah, put the S on there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you want to, uh, do we want to dive into the email bag? Let's, we've done a couple. Let's get into one of the things, main topics that we really wanted to talk about today. And then we may be able to come back to that email. And that is, all right, the new 2015 Harley Davidson Road Glide. It's a special motorcycle review. And I'm just going to tell you guys, I reviewed the 2015. It's not for the backcountry. It is not a backcountry motorcycle. And it's not a, what, what was the other backcountry and dirt? Was it? Did he say no, dirt? He said, I don't remember. He just now. said backcountry. I think backcountry. Yeah, it's not a dirt bike. The Harley Davidson definitely not made for for motocross tracks. I would keep not, it off the. Although yeah. I'm pretty sure I could take my 2014 and do a heel clicker, dude. Straight off a jump, <laughs> dude, and just do a heel clicker. <laughs> that would be Superman. Sweet. <laughs> I've seen you do close on your CBO, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm pretty close a couple times. Not on purpose ever. But. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I went down and I like to do this guys and I plan on doing it to a whole bunch more bikes um, and not just Harley. Speaking of that, I have talked in the past. I've called out to the community for a correspondent, so to speak, who has metric bikes to call in on the podcast. We'll actually put them on via Skype, like while me and you were sitting here and tell us about the new Hondas and tell us about the new BMWs and you know, what's changed. I can't keep up on all that. I'm lucky to keep up on Harley. So right. again, if there's a correspondent that wants to uh, talk about that stuff, we'll do some episodes and we'll just get on here and we'll, we'll talk a bit about the the metric world. And I, the, you could teach me a lot. I'm telling you guys, I don't know nothing about really a whole bunch about metrics at all. Robbie knows more than me. He used to have one, but yeah, I think that uh, people there, there's a good large group of people out there that ride metric bikes. I went uh, Monday, I went on a 630 mile ride and I... Oh, did you go down for that class? Yeah. That's right. Because yeah. I was working. I yeah, Jake and I went. Sweet. Jake, his longest day ever, he did about 760. Wow. Because while I taught, he went and had lunch with his mom and stepdad. Wow. Good for yeah. him. So he, he enjoyed it. But uh, I took him back to that restaurant in Pendleton. Oh, yeah. 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 Nice, dude. Yeah. So... um Nice. But we passed a lot of metric bikes, and I'm sure we have a lot of metric listeners, and we're not opposed to that. We just don't have the experience or the knowledge of those bikes. We, like he said, we have enough uh, problems keeping up with the Harleys. So call us. Give us the info. Right. We, we're more than happy to present it. We just don't have it. Yep. You all even Skype you. I'll put you on a podcast, and you can tell me all about the new. Yeah. I, I don't like talking about stuff that I don't know anything about. And now, so, corresponding live. That's right. There you go, oh, dude. Yeah. I like it. I like it. We're all over this. Um. All right. So- if you guys, I did uh, do a complete, it's free again, of course, guys. Do you want um, to shout out the place where you got the bike? Um, yes. Our local dealership here in Yakima, Vegas, Owens, Harley Davidson um, in Yakima, Washington. Very good to me and a lot of friends down there. And uh, thank you very much. And then when they allow you to pull a bike off the floor and videotape it in their parking lot, they're treating you right. No doubt. And I, I send them links so they can see it if they want to give it to customers, you know, cause it is free. So if people want to see it, I give them the, uh, I send a link, but I did a full video for you guys going over the road glide. Now you either, I, I think it's fair to say just from my experience, you either like a street glider or road glide. There's, it's, there's not a lot of in between. It's all about the fairing. It is. And that bat wing fairing is sexy as hell. It is. I'm, sexy. Not, bi- I'm not big on the big cone, but Hey, some guys like it. And I guess it's what your personal preference is on whether you want the fairing to turn with you or not. That's what it comes down to. Right. It's true. Um, I've had both. I'm with you, dude. I prefer street the street is just sexy. Oh, yeah. It D's thinking about it right all day now. long, baby. <laughs> it drops panties all day. Speaking of, dude, we keep it pretty clean here on the podcast. I don't know if you noticed the last two episodes I had to mark explicit. Did you notice that? No, I didn't. It's just too hard with Sons of Anarchy, dude, because we play clips and stuff, and they're saying F-bombs. And so I just marked them explicit. So from now on, um, if we ever... Because we, you know, we don't have foul mouths. You know, the audience knows that. Yeah, we goof around. But if we ever drop an F-bomb or the or the S-word or something, then I'll just mark it explicit. I'm not going back and bleeping stuff out anymore. Is um, it easy to do? I didn't know that you could do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Each episode, I, I can either mark it clean or explicit. And okay. So now if that happens, if there's one, but you guys, just so you know, it's marked explicit. We're not 
in here. Um, well, with I know. Like, with like foul mouths and talking about just completely. Fa- it's just once in a while an S bomb is going to drop, you know, or an F bomb. And you know what? I'm not going to go back and freaking bleep it. I'm just going to mark it explicit. So yeah, yeah. I know you put a lot of time in going back and deleting <sighs> that stuff when we do it. It's enough just going back and, and editing all the audio and, and getting it sounding right, let alone trying to do that. And you know what? I don't think people care that much. We're not, they know we're not in here. Just F bomb this F bomb. I, I read an article one time mm-hmm. that uh, in the business world, using foul language does not decrease your productivity. Really? Yeah. It, it's, it said that now it's, I mean, we've talked about tattoos plenty of times. Tattoos are more socially acceptable. I guess languages do. Nice. Yeah. Well, if you're it not in, it was an interesting article. It's on MSN here about I don't know, six, seven months ago. There you go. You know? Um, yeah, so that's how we roll here at Law Abiding Biker Media now. Um, yeah, it's just getting so We're busy. Whatever I can cut out in workflow, dude, I got to cut out. And that was one of them. I finally said, you know what? How do you, it, it was hard all last season to keep Sons of Anarchy clean, dude. Oh yeah. Especially after that sex scene in season yeah. episode one. Holy smokes. And I, this year I'm doing a son, like the first, the next two that we're going to record tomorrow night with Oscar, the next two SOA ones, I've got like 16 sound clips. Well, I'm not going to go in. And first of all, I have to get those sound clips. Second of all, I have to edit them. And if, on top of it, I would hey, have to edit out and bleep their, their. It wasn't on a uh, pay-per-view channel. It was on cable TV. It can be put <laughs> Ex- on the podcast. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, getting back to the road glide. So glide. what he says, what, what uh, LD says is exactly right. It's the shark fin um let's go in i wrote a blog guys if you want to learn all about the road glide and you're a road glide fan now i I don't dislike it i just wouldn't get it for me um i wrote all the specs i did a really nice write-up i did a really nice video with music and also some uh voice not voiceover but i actually talked while i was doing and explained things the video's right there again lawbindingbiker.com slash 2015 harley road glide that's forward slash 2015 Harley Road Glide. That'll take you directly directly to it. Of course, it will be in the show notes for this episode, lawbindingbiker.com slash whatever the episode number is. Now, they call that fairing, what do they call it? The shark nose? Did yeah, I, yeah, something like that. Yeah, they call it the shark nose fairing. Um, here's some pictures I took, though. Good looking picture, though, huh? It is a good looking I, bike. Too. And, and the one I did it on, they call Mysterious Sun Glow, Mysterious Red Sun Glow is what they call it. So here you go. Here's my blog I wrote and they do. So our, our street glides, they call the bat wing fairing again, guys, the bars turn with the fairing and, uh, the road glide, the fairing is set. Um, and mounted it, to the frame, it, it's mounted to the frame and the bars turn in, inside in, yeah. the fairing. That's the biggest difference. Other than that guys. Now they did. Did you see this LD? They put these two vents in the front. You don't notice until you get up so close on the side of the headlight. You see this, there's a vent there. Oh, wow. And there's a vent there, and there's a reason for that on that. Go, go back to that picture. Uh huh. Is that at the right next to the handlebar at the back of the fairing? That black is that just a design, or is there something cut out there too? No, I, that's just a shadow. This here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the way the it shadowed. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. It. I. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So to the side of the headlights, there is two R two vents um, that you guys will notice. In addition. There's a vent on the windshield. Yes. They have the, just like my bike, they have the, uh, came out in 2014 guys. And that's the, uh, head buffeting vent to reduce head buffeting. So you ask yourself looking at the 2015 road glide, Hardy Davidson road glide. You like that color by the way? Yeah. It's I think not, it's all bad. right. Yeah. I don't know if it's what I'd pick, but I like it close to Matt's bike. That's yeah, it is. It is. Um, so you ask yourself, why did they put two? Why don't they put two more vents around the headlight in the street glide? instead of just the one well because it's not for looks it would uh go right into the inside of the fairing well that's where this one goes where's that vent go to though where, what's on the other side underneath but that's where your hole is for your handlebars to right move on the bat no, wing there's nothing there they actually force it and this is what's interesting um that brings up a good point um so you got the vent up top right well right. the problem is with the road glide engineers found from harley um i read a bunch of stuff so engineers had a problem because that fairing sits so much more forward than the street glide. Right. Okay. And that causes um, some, some design problems when they're trying to force that air. So you're right up next to the fairing on the street glide. And so they can get away with that one vent and it pushes the air up and it creates that wall and it's supposed to pop it over your helmet. They couldn't do that with the road glide. They were riding it, testing it in the wind tunnels. 
the air was going right into the forehead of the guy. Oh, gotcha. So they put those two additional vents in the road glide. That so not only do you have air going up, you have air coming underneath, and that air coming underneath meets the air coming up, and it pushes together both of them, and it pops it up over your helmet. Oh, okay. interesting, isn't now, it? Now still lick, uh, air cooled. It is okay. Oil cooler, but it is air cooled. Yes. They didn't go, because they're going to have to put lowers on, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. Yeah. We're going to talk about the CVO models, CVO 14 models. So no, it is air-cooled. So basically the same exact bike, guys, frame, motor. It's got the 110, or excuse me, the 103. 103. Um, high output 103. Yeah, high output 103, twin cam, V-twin motor. It rips. Uh, it's got the 255 cam in it. So basically exactly like my 2014 Street Glide, minus uh the batwing fairing it's got the shark nose fairing and of course guys it comes with the new boombox infotainment system however um they made the road glide and the road glide special do you know that yeah so the road glide just like the street glide and street glide special which i have the street glide special uh the road glide same thing it comes with the smaller boombox infotainment system the the 4.3 screen and then the 6.5 uh comes on the street glide special um so that's one thing and the the special comes with an alarm standard um, it comes with the uh, integrated brake system standard. Um, but other than that, between the Street Glide and the Street Glide Special, uh, the Special just comes with some extra goodies. Um, anything else we want to talk about on that, buddy? Let's get on to the Big Daddy CVOs. Ooh, and that will be the next one I'm reviewing, guys, for you, um, is the CVO. It was down there that day I was video recording, and I told the guy, that's the next one. I'll be back in a week, and uh, hopefully it's not sold. Beautiful. but It wasn't sold. Friday. Oh, you were in there Friday. Sweet. I think it was Friday. And that's the, the exact bike. Oh, it's so beautiful. That silver. So the CVO is made by the Custom Vehicle Operations Division of Harley, also known as the Screaming Eagle Package. Mm, you uh, got one. So he's familiar with this. I've got one. They only make a limited number per year and they make a, uh, they have special paint schemes for the CVO. The CVO basically is they take a, a street glide special and then they trick it out with chrome, the 110 motor and... They put custom paint jobs on them, and they sell them as these custom vehicles. And the problem with them is, is they only make so many a year. So like me, in 2012, last time they did a street glide because they didn't do them in 13, they'll pick like four bikes a year and make them in CVO models. These are the three they're doing this year, I think. Okay, so CVO Limited, CVO Road Glide, and the Street Glide. Yep. So they're doing okay. three? It looks like it. Yeah, that's what it says. So the, the year I bought mine, they did four, but... I wanted mine in black. There was three paint schemes that year, and it took them five months to find me a bike because the black one was the one that was uh, highly sought after, I guess. They could have got me an orange one or a... Your a, color was? My color, Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, right. And eventually they found a... Uh, they had it narrowed down to one in Montana and one that was waiting to come into the west side. And the other two colors, they could have got me in two days. So I waited almost five months for a bike. I remember, yeah. Yeah, I was waiting forever. And I would go buy this bike tomorrow if i didn't it's hot it is if i didn't have i, I bought a color match trunk and i i've put about eight grand into my bike and if i hadn't have done all of that i probably would go buy one of these oh yeah but that song just needs to be played it does thinking of me riding down the road on this bike Th that is a trick looking bike let me tell you and and like i said they're chromed out they're decked out there's not much left to do to them um i did a exhaust Let's see, I did an exhaust. I put, well, you know, highway pegs, floorboards for the passenger. Um, I'm trying to think from the front of the bike to the back. I changed out my grips for heated grips. That's one thing it doesn't come with. It does mm -hmm. not come with heated grips or heated seat. Everything else, it, it comes with. It's got the, my bike has the uh, four speakers in the fairing, two speakers in the lowers, and two speakers in the saddlebag lids. I know we can hear it. <laughs> right, yeah, that's what everybody says. <laughs> oh, there's four bikes behind you, I can hear it. And then my bike comes with a saddle, or a, uh, sorry, an iPod plug in the saddle bag. So I can, I control everything from the handlebars. Now this particular bike is the same, except for it does not have speakers in the lowers because the 110 is now liquid cooled. And that's where the, uh, yeah, good radiators call. are. So you have, and, and I don't know because I didn't open them, but looking at the bike, I said, oh, it doesn't have speakers in the lowers. And the same guy that sold me my bike goes, yeah, these new ones are liquid cooled. And I said, oh, okay. So I don't know if, on, say you buy an Ultra Limited, it has a, a they call it a glove box down there. That's mm -hmm, a little spot mm -hmm. where you can put stuff. I don't know if that's 
if you could put stuff in these or not. I don't know if it's taken up by the radiator or if there's a pocket there. I don't know. Good call. So that's I got to look when I'm down there. Yeah. I'm thinking they can't have a compartment down there because it's, that radiator's got to take it up. Yeah, I don't know how big the radiator is, but you're talking low profile front tire uh, after you know aftermarket Harley wheels. Um, the one design flaw I found in mine is the same on this one. Is the rider, the passenger seat overlaps the rider's seat. There's mm-hmm. no hole for a rider's backrest. Keep that in mind. That's the one complaint I have about my bike. Yeah, true. Yeah. Does this one look like it does? It does. I checked when I was down there. Oh, you did. I told Sam, I, the salesman, same guy sold me mine. I said, this is the dumbest design Harley's ever done, and they've stuck with it. That's what I have Just a problem with. Just put a slit with. in it. Yeah. You know? I, I don't know what the deal is there, but that's a that's a design flaw in my mind. Mm-hmm. In two and a half years, I've put 26,000 miles on my bike, and it'd be a hell of a lot more comfortable, and I'd probably have 30 if I had a backrest. Yeah, exactly. So all you Hardy Davidson guys listening um, that work at Harley, we know you do. Um, yeah. Fix that crap, man. Change the... Just put a stinking slit in the seat so a guy can put a... It's a CVO. Hey, hey. It's supposed to be like the hottest, greatest thing since sliced bread, and then you F up and you don't put a slit in it for a backrest. Go it's ahead. All, it's all about the money. They're going to sell you another seat. It, oh, yes. I refuse. I'm, I'm 35. <laughs> I can go Dude, without a backrest. That's awesome. Now, when I'm 55, screw it. I'm going to yep. change out the seat and put a it's backrest. It's a matter right of now, pride for yeah, you. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. I always wondered. I'm like, LD, just get a new seat, dude. Yeah, it's you know, stick it to him. The dude. seat is comfortable, but you don't have the backrest. And I'm on, uh, you can go to cvoharley.com, and that's basically a blog and forum for CVO owners. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. And they uh, they complain on there like crazy. They're always bitching about the seat. That's hilarious, dude. And Harley's listening right to them too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they've changed a lot. God forbid they'd listen to their customers a little more. Um, all right, but we love Harley. I, I still love it. Um, all right, so we're a little Harley centric here. We're not talking about BMWs right now. So, and I don't know, like your bike, I don't know, but this CVO will come with like a hydraulic clutch. Does your bike have? Yes, another? it'll come with. The, but it's the special now. Remember, they got the Street Glide and the okay. Street Glide Special now. It'll come with the ABS Brembo brakes. I mean, it's the got, integrated. Yes, yeah, everything's upgrade. The CVO. Well, well, when I the bought mine in, when I bought mine in twelve, none of that stuff came on the Street Glide, so that was all an upgrade. Okay. everything was upgraded. Right. So, and I don't know what they've upgraded on this one. I don't know enough about the bike. I just saw it the other day. Did you say this one? They also came out with the CVO Soft Tail Deluxe. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. So it is. Yeah. Four. So four bikes. Yeah. I thought it was usually four. So let's look at some of the specs. And this one we're looking at, guys, is silver, and it's got like black flames on the fairing and uh, along the bags and the side. It looks pretty hot. Big deal, obviously, is the 110 motor instead of the 103, guys. Now, LD, do you pay a little more for the uh, CVO? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about uh here we go what, was it 30 what's it say i can't see msrp 36 so 10 grand more yep mm-hmm. and that and that's base though because you know even the cvo you're going to put some extra stuff on yeah, you're going to like heated grips and yeah, you know change out your pipes although i would suggest not paying them to do heated grips guys head over to lawabidingbiker.com slash harley heated grips we have a complete tutorial of it it's becoming very popular okay and before you frustrate the hell out of yourself Think about this. The CVO does have a lot more stuff running through the handlebars. Uh, yeah, but you don't have to really run it through the handlebars because the okay. way they're making them now. Okay. You, you just one side. Um, they, they're they actually making it the new bikes really ready for heated grips. Okay, and good. we show you how to do that. Good good point, though. Good point. Everything I do handlebars on my bike is two hours more labor than on a standard bike. Yeah. Because apparently there's more stuff running through the handlebars. And, the, it's and true. even the even uh, the service guy said, yeah, it's a real pain. Yes. So I haven't tackled anything on handlebars. Right. Now, good point. Good point. We did have a guy do a CVO off our video, and uh, it it's it, it was the same because they're kind of pre-wiring a few things. So it, I won't get into it heavily, but it, it will work um, uh, for, for that model bike, too. So the 110 is the big deal. And again, with tax license and warranty, all that, you'll be over 40 grand by the time you walk out that door. Yep. I was at Bam. 42. Just take a jar of Vaseline, bend over. Set it on the salesman's desk, bend over and just take it, yeah. take it, gr- take a stick to bite on and uh, walk out. Happy. And hey, and ride out with a little pride. Baby. Ride out with pride. I, my MSRP, I think was 33 and I ended up walking out my bike at about 42. Wow. By the time I, the trunk, the heated grip. See, there the, you go. The trunk. Yep. Yeah. The heated and then, grips. I, oh, and I have a GPS mounted on my fairing. Now you wouldn't have to do that because it'd be integrated. But they still put it into the price of the bike. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's why this bike's more, I'm sure, is the the integrated uh, GPS and the, um, what was the other thing on this that's different than mine? 
Um, oh, the the liquid cooled. Right, liquid cooled. Yeah. Yep. So you won't be able to remove your lowers anymore. But Robbie, you said you can't anyways because you got speakers in yours. I do have plugs for those oh, wires. Not, okay, but I don't. The wires I think could be hanging there with a plug on them. I don't know if there's a place to tuck them. So right. I just leave my lowers on. It's fine. I've got. You can open. I would if I had up, them. I'd know? leave them on. Yeah, you can open. They've got those ratcheting right vents. Right. You can open. It's not that big a deal. I do haven't you, noticed much of a difference. Do you think they're going to have vents because it's air or liquid cooled now? They can't put an air vent there now, can they? Well, no. I'm talking about. Uh, okay, see where the the furthest out out the right furthest where it comes out. Forward? Oh yeah. No, no. On the other end. Okay. On the inside of that, there's a, a spot. Well, I can show oh, you on my bike. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. On the inside of the lower. Yeah, on the right. inside of the lower, it moves. Okay. And the lowers, guys, we're talking to the lowers protectives that go over the crash bars there. Hey, um, if you hit, you ride in some rain or something, those lowers are nice. Oh, I see, too. Or you're catching a lot of bugs or something. Your, they your are nice. boots are always dry. My yeah. legs are soaked. Yeah, no doubt. So let's move on. I will do a review of that, guys. So look forward to that free video and free blog if you want to check that bike out. If I had the money which I don't, of course, um, I would be loving to get that thing. It's hot. Um, all right. So the 2015 CVO street glide it comes with a boom box. Of course we talked about, let's look at some of this. guess we already talked about all that. All right. So let's move down and look at this bad boy, which is the 2015 CVO road glide. And of course, uh, road glide took a year off. Hardy took a year off for making the road glide. And we just discussed that. Um, but this is like the ultra road. Yeah, glide. I was gonna say that's an ultra because it's got a trunk on it. Yes, and it it MSRP's at almost forty thousand dollars, and this of course is the full bagger, guys. It looks like the ultra classic, you know, the full full Harley Davidson bagger, everything loaded. Um, just the but it's fairing. right, just the shark nose fairing yep. exa- with those two new vents and those new headlights, which are supposed to be quite a bit brighter for stock is what they're uh, claiming at this point. So uh, it's, it's a uh, water cooled, of course. And what is it coming with? It's, it should be coming with the one Oh three. Um, no one ten. Oh yeah. Cause it's CVO. Yeah. Duh, yeah. Duh. One ten. Okay. So yeah, that, that CVO model of course is coming. That's with even the comes with highway pegs. It does. Look at that. First Harley I've ever seen come with highway pegs. God forbid. They must've had some laying around. Yeah. Must have just for that. <laughs> just for the display model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And you said earlier, good point. Once you put pipes and stuff too, you're going to pipe it right away and all that. So yeah, you're going to be up over 40 grand on that. Um, on my street glide special, my 2014 with tax license um, and uh, warranty and all that, I want to say I was out the door at like 28,000. Yeah. So that I was, was 14 more. So you were 14 more. Wow. Pretty substantial. I guess that's why I don't have that. I'm, I'm just blessed. Very, very much blessed by the Lord to have the, uh, the street glide special. So I'm not going to complain. All right, let's not go. It's all, it's all the same. Yeah. Specs. So we don't need to go over the specs on that. Oh, what do we got here? So they did the CVO limited too, huh? Yeah. So it's just the, uh, yep. different fairing. So there you go. Same exact as the road road glide. Uh, they did the ultra classic, which is the full bagger, but it's got the bat wing fairing. And of course it's got the one ten and all that good stuff. Ooh, different color gauges and stuff. Oh, the nice yeah, thing. Yeah, they do, do upgraded gauges. The uh, now I think all bikes do, but they color match the inside of the fairing. No, back in 2012. only the specials. Oh, color match, but they don't. You know how mine's shiny, like yeah. it's painted. Right now, the regular street glide and the regular road glide come with that matte, plasticky looking. Okay, they don't right. finish it off. We'll see on the CVOs. They they color match it to the bike. The inside I of the see. fairing. Yes. They come with the uh, diamond cut gauges. I mean, all that stuff's up. All the little things are upgraded, and that's why I call it a show bike. It's basically they may take a bike, they take their catalog and throw a bunch of crap yeah, on it. Right. So. Right. It is beautiful though. It is beautiful. Um, and then last but not least. Can you imagine that you lightweight go over bike there, in dude? a 110? Oh my God, I know. A, a soft tail deluxe and a 110 <laughs> cubic inch motor. Wow. And that MSRP is at, what is that, 28? Yeah, tw- almost 29, 28, 999. Yeah, lightweight bike. I mean, how much is that thing? 800 pounds? Oh, or less my seven. street glide's 800, so it's less than that. Okay. My street glide's like 820 or something dry. So they did a breakout a couple years ago on a CVO with a 110, and that bike's got to be 600 pounds. I mean, that thing's got to fly. Oh, yeah, dude, the breakout. We had to talk about that on one of these episodes, not this one, but yeah, that thing has got to rip, no yeah. doubt. 110 cubic inch, six speed, and 650, 700 pounds. And of course, it's cheaper, guys, because it doesn't have the big trunks and fairings and lowers. It's just a windshield. It's pretty stripped down. The White soft wall tail. tires, a yeah. little bit old school. It is. It's got the old school fender a little bit. Um, so there you go. There's your CVO models, guys. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to be doing uh, at least, at least hopefully in the next month, I'll do the uh, the Streetlight CVO. 
All right. You got anything else to say about that, buddy? Nope. All right. I, I enjoy mine. I, I paid a little more for it, but there was a few things I wanted to add to a street glide. I wanted to put speakers in the trunk yeah. or in the uh, saddlebag lids because I like that. And when I talked to the dealership, he says, you know what? For two grand more than all the extras you want, you can get the bigger motor and everything else. I said, all right, go for it. Yeah. And, and that, it was my happy divorce present to myself. And I, so <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and my truck's paid for. My uh, All I have is a house payment and a bike payment. So. A very nice happy divorce. Yep. <laughs> happy divorce And the, the guy goes, uh, he goes, well, you can get a different year model. I said, no, it has to be a 2012. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, have you got your bike in, dude? You need to get it in. Yeah, I don't, I'm not, not sure yet. what's going uh, on. Yeah, he's got a little something going on. But uh, you want to uh, jump into the email, dive real deep into the email bag. Real deep. Real I deep. got mail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See what you can come I up with there. Yeah. What'd you pull out? What'd you pull out? All right. I got John Philbrick. He says, Ryan, great job on both vids. I'm not sure which ones he's talking about. I'm impressed with the thoroughness of your product, especially noting the time you put into the learning process of the BB functions. Boombox functions. He's talking about functions. Now oh, I know okay. what the email's about. He's talking about my three boombox videos, which you can just head over to lawbindingbiker.com slash Harley Boombox. It will there's a video, intro video there. It has all three videos listed. You can learn everything you want. So go ahead. That's says, what he's talking about. You answered my questions on the navigation areas and so much more on the rest of the different areas. You really overloaded me, but at the same time, I now know where to go find specific answers on the many different areas. <laughs> And your presentation of the High material tech was down to earth, easy to understand, and most of all, functional. Mm. Now I have a go-to reference for my unanswered questions, which Harley Davidson left me and others in the dark. No, they did, dude. <laughs> they Harley really uh, put the cart before the horse on this one. My next purchase will be the Boombox software video, since I anticipate it will be great in greater depth than my experience of downloading HD software. <laughs> so thanks again. For your videos and time spent in researching the HD dark holes and producing such a fine product. There you go. Thank you, you, John. Thank you very much. And uh, I already told you guys, uh, you know, it's uh, lawabidingbiker.com slash Harley Boombox. They're really doing good. And I just redid the original. I put about 80 hours and uh, I completely overhauled it. And uh, I sent it out free to everybody that had already purchased the original because that's how I roll. The um, very, very first video we did was oil change on my bike. I know. And you've done, what, two oil change videos since that have yes. been longer and more thorough? Yes. And that first one has over 700,000 views know, dude. on YouTube. I looked the other day. I was like, you got to be kidding me. And we get comments on it all the time. Oh, I bet. But yeah, yeah it, it was. That's what's so funny. You're right. It was like, we didn't even know what we we're doing back then. I'm just no. like, oh, this is video, this crap, and put it on YouTube. <laughs> I got my kid's camera. Yeah. I want to record you. No doubt, dude. Yeah. Um, it, little did we know. Little did we know. But thanks where, for that. Where it all started. It is. We're always going to remember that. We'll never get rid of that video, dude. Ever. Never. That video is going to stay on YouTube forever, as long as YouTube's around. Um, all right. So there you go, guys. Um, the boom box was put, you know, the, the, the uh, cart before the horse. We're not going to bore you with that. Um, you can go over there and, and find that information if you want. But uh, it is, it's a pain point and, uh, you know, there's a huge uh, learning curve on it. I've helped flatten that curve for you. All right. Hit up a couple more emails oh, and call her good. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because we're right at about an hour. Let's, uh, oh, I want to talk really quick about this. This is from Bruce White of Alam, A-L-A-M, Michigan. And he sent this resource to me. Thank you, uh, Bruce, for that. Um it looks like it's in beta to me, and it is um, roadtrippers.com. And I was I wanted to tell you about this, LD. That's why I threw it in the show notes here because you're a big ride planner guy. Worked you, on our ride today. You actually uh, introduced me when uh, we became uh, uh, started Sworn Few. You introduced me to ride planner. Of course, I, now I have a video on it because, but uh, <laughs> that's what we do. That's what we do. Um, but anyways, uh, this is Road Tripper, bro. Check it out. All right, we'll do. And it's like uh, it's beta, guys. It's roadtrippers.com, but. It's just like Ride Planner, guy. It uh, You can put in your start location and then um, where we can go to a map over here. So let's just go Yakima, Washington to Seattle, Washington. So it's kind of like, um, you know, Google Maps and stuff. But look here, you can get in here and there's all kinds of options in here. I was playing with it. There's So the highlighted area is going to show you any attractions within that? Right. That's the way I okay. understand it. And so it's really good for a car. And then they have an app. app. I was just going to say there's an app down there. And it gives you turn by turn, unlike the Ride Planner app. 
Okay. You know how the ride planner app, although we upload it into our GPS or my boom box. Right. But if you don't have a GPS or boom box, you could do this road trippers, which is free. You can create an account and then you can get it on your Android or your smartphone and you can, it will sync with it and it will give you turn by turn. Now I haven't played with it enough to know if you can drag roads, you know, um, I really haven't uh, reviewed it. So I don't know what all its limitations are. It is in beta, as you can see here at the top of the website. So I assume they're working on it, but it's a good interface. It's clean. Look at, you know, it's really clean interface and all yeah, that. Definitely. So, but I don't know if you get a chance, yeah, um, I'll play with it. Yeah. Play with it and see if, see if, see how it compares to ride planner. I Be spent about a half hour on ride planner today. You did. And you sent me the new updates, which yeah. is cool. We're, uh, we're going to be heading out to Sturgis next year. So Yeehaw. if you want to meet us next year, we're going to do a Sturgis full area. meetup. I'm actually going to organize. That's awesome. We want to meet you. Yes, we do. We want to meet you. We're going to have a location and a time and we're going to do a huge meetup. And Absolutely. Afterwards, when Sturgis, when the, the guys jet home, hopefully Ryan, if he can get the time off. Yeah. Buddy. And I are going to be heading out to Pittsburgh for the Fraternal Order of Police National Conference and hitting up Harley in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on the way oh, back. Oh, yeah. I want to tour that so bad. I got some things on my mind I want to talk to them about, too. Yeah. I do, too. The seat on the CVO. <laughs> <laughs> just take it in there, dude. Just walk in the front doors. We'll unbolt your seat. Just walk in and throw it on the ground and say, what the frick is this? Yeah. <laughs> Who's in charge of design around here? <laughs> I want some answers now. I'm sure we'll be briskly escorted out. Yeah. Hey, come security. here. I want to show you something. How in the hell do I put a backrest on this? <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Uh, all right. Why don't you uh, hit up? Uh, but we will, guys. We are going to Sturgis, and that's uh, details to come, but I'm going to... It'll be a pretty formal... Not formal, but... Uh, something that where we're not just meeting in a parking lot. I want to meet at a restaurant and and have people sign up. I'll have a sign up page so we kind of know who's coming and maybe have a nice dinner and drinks. I really want to meet the community, man. So oh, yeah, that's the funnest part about this. I it is. I mean, sitting in a studio talking with you, Yahoo's. I see you guys all the time. <laughs> I want to meet these people that we're talking to, and I want to get some feedback. When we met uh, Greg down yeah. in California this last summer, he says, "All right, who's you know LD? Hey, man, right. big hug. You know who's Chewy." He they, knew all the names. He yeah, didn't know oh the faces. Yeah, exactly. And and uh, he, and uh, half the guys didn't know we were beating him. <laughs> so yeah, right. When you're he right. walked up to Chewy and started hugging Chewy, <laughs> Chewy looks at us and goes, who the hell is this guy? We forgot to let Chewy in that we were meeting Greg. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Ryan and I had been talking to him the whole trip. But anyway, Greg loved it. And he uh, went out and had a few drinks with us that night and dinner. And then he stayed in a hotel. We stayed at my buddy's house. And then he rode with us the next day into Yosemite for i don't know five hours rode with us and then he had to jet off and we went north he went south so but okay next one from mark rosalet of hilliard ohio mm -hmm. shout out to ohio subject clean and polishing bike is there any certain products that you like to use when cleaning and polishing both the painted and chrome surfaces of the bike i have tried several but have not found one that i can truly say is the best that i have used like to keep the bike looking great so looking for a good solution. Bug slide. Bug slide, mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Here's what I respond in short. Um, I'll tell you, I responded to him. Obviously, this was an email. So thank you for sending that email in. If you guys want to uh, leave an email, lawabidingbiker.com slash contact, and uh, you can leave us a voicemail there, an email. It's all on one page. You can, Don't forget, you can always call us too at our listener line, 509-731-3548, directly from your cell phone. And uh, of course, over at the contact page, you could do it via your computer microphone. So we switched some time ago when uh, uh, Dick Peters from Dakota Shield sent us a bottle of Bug Slide, and uh, I really got hooked on it. Um, never uh, had used it before. So for dry cleaning, um, you know, not wet washing, but dry cleaning in between washes, we're using Bug Slide, bro. Um, I strongly suggest it. Now I don't have a direct affiliate with Bug Slide, but you can get it on some different places. But I suggest that you head over to uh, uh, Dakota Shield. That's a uh, www as ld would say dakota hyphen shield.com world wide web world wide web http um so that's dakota hyphen shield.com dick peters is the owner of that over there also sells shields for motorcycles he's got some other products he's a friend um of us uh, since we started this podcast of course we don't have a direct affiliation but i am uh, willing to send some businesses away as we have in the past um, but yeah, tell them when you order, either leave in the comments, you guys, if you would, um, or tell Dick, um, you know, that law abiding biker sent you Ryan Erlacher or LD or Popeye or any of those guys, tell them that law abiding biker podcast guys sent you over there to get bug slide or a windshield or anything like that. Um, maybe we can pick 
old Dick back up as a little more uh, um, steady affiliate, but he's been good to us over time. He did send me a windshield to test out, which I thank him very much. Some sunblock, um, some bug slide and things like that. So he's provided us and uh, I just, uh, you know, believe in what he's doing. We've, we've uh, reviewed the D- Dakota shields in the past. So listen to some past episodes for those reviews. All right. Do we got one time or do you want to take it out? Let's do one more. Let's get her going. Yeah, there's a short one there. Daniel you go. Gilbert email. of Quebec, Canada. Shout out to the Canadian folks. Sure, you betcha. So front rotor placement, replacement on a FLHX, which is a Street Glide 2011. FLHX is the Harley model. Street Glide. For mm-hmm. the Street Glide. He said, I'm trying to find information on front rotor replacement for my 2011 FLHX. I've seen your video on how to remove the front wheel but is there anything anything specific I should know when replacing rotors such as torque specifications? So Ryan responded and said, there are torque specs you will want to follow for the rotor. Each year is a bit different, so a quick call to your local dealer and they will tell you. Unless you have a service manual, that is where your dealer will look up the specs. Okay, I'm going to give you a little tip here. Yeah, go. When you're buying a bike, mm, especially me, good call. I spent 40 grand on a Harley. <laughs> I told them I'm not walking out of the door with this bike, and this was the the sealed the deal. I wanted a service manual, and I wanted a parts manual. Both of them were around fifty bucks, and I said throw them in. And uh, so you go buy a new Harley. You tell them you want that. Uh, the, oh no no, we'll, when we work on it, we'll, or you can ask us questions. No, I want it for my garage because <laughs> I had to buy one too, dude. Yeah, and I so, spent sixty five bucks on it. 65 there you go Mm -hmm. i I think it was around 50 so i have that for my bike so that's a recommendation for you but it's it's just like a chilton's or a good advice man something like that one of those books that gives you torque specs on everything and it take uh part numbers and break down by uh you know the schematics and everything on electrical everything on the bike it's what the mechanics use it's the same exact book yep right so if you want uh, to work do any work on your own and it sounds like daniel does Maybe go buy one, but next time you buy a bike, tell them to throw the dang thing in. Awesome advice, man. I remember yeah. you telling me that story. This is not the owner's manual, guys. All the bikes come with that. This is a service manual, $65 and service manuals that mechanics use. Harley usually won't dicker too much on the price. I can tell you on a CVO, MSRP is a deal because usually they can mark them up higher than MSRP because they're so limited number. So one place they can get you the deals that you want, they aren't going to give you a deal on the bike, but you can work on prices on service uh helmet they, they, they threw in a helmet for yep, me before throw in a helmet yep uh they're probably going to charge you uh they might charge you full price for parts if you want exhaust or whatever but tell them you want labor thrown in or or significantly discounted at least and tell them you want the service manual parts manual things like that they aren't going to take much off the bike but hit them everywhere else yeah very very good ld i'm glad you brought that up because we've never talked about that before and on those specs, make sure there's a lot of things you don't need to torque on the Harley. I mean, they tell you to, but please, please torque your rotors. That's super important. I would definitely make sure and torque. And I've actually, before I have my service manual, I've just called down to the Harley dealer before. I just call the service, say, you know, what's the capacities or what's the torque specs on the front wheel rotor? They'll tell you. They just look it up in their computer. That's one other thing I'll tell you. What's that? Buy local. Oh. I went to... Um, I, I look, you know, the CVOs, they're limited. They're hard to find. So mm-hmm. I went to uh, the west side of the state over by Seattle. They're bigger dealerships. They get a lot more bikes in. And I was just pricing them out. And I said, hey, you know, I'm just over here trying to price this bike out. This is what I want. And I had it right down to the what exhaust I wanted on it and everything. And the guy could beat the local dealer by about a thousand bucks. He goes, but I urge you to go over there and buy it. Mm-hmm. And I said, why? He goes, you ever want to go on a trip and you find something wrong with your bike right before you go? You're going to want a loaner. I'm not oh. going to give you a loaner when you're 250 miles away, 200 miles away. Good point, man. You want your bike picked up for service because it's not running at all? I'm not going to send a truck over, and the local dealership might not either if you didn't buy it there. Buy it there, they'll treat you right. Go back and see them. And he knows the local guys. They're, you know, the Harley world's small. And I said, all right, that's fair enough. So I came back local, and and uh, they were able to get me the bike eventually. So Good points, man, because they do. They do treat you right if you buy it local and they know you. Yep. Get to know your dealer good. We know our mechanics by name. We know all that stuff, man. I'm in there a couple, yeah, three or four times. My, my salesman and I play softball together with the GM. So I see those What's guys. his first name again? Sam. Yeah, Sam. And Thanks, the GM's Sam. Dwayne. So we see those guys all the time we're in there. You yeah. Know? And He's, I've ridden with them, well, Dwayne at least, you know, a couple times. Yeah. So 
Yeah. Sweet dealio. All right, guys. We should probably think about getting out. All right, guys. You should be thinking about riding. If you're not thinking about riding, you know this one, dude? No. You don't? You then heard? go ride. Don't think about it. Do it. <laughs> I do not want to see lab audience. You should be lab audience. I do not want to see bikes at the end of the year when you put fifteen hundred miles oh, on them. That's ridiculous. If you on, want something in your garage that looks pretty, you want something that looks pretty in your garage. Go buy a Corvette or something. I don't really care. You get a bike, ride the dang thing. That's what it's for. LDs straight at you, coming straight at you. That's right. You should be riding. If you're not riding, you should be thinking about riding. If you're not thinking about riding, that's what we're here to help with, guys. Hope you enjoyed the episode. All right, let's take it out here, LD. Thanks for being in the studio, brother. No problem. I had to defend myself after the last episode. You guys called me out pretty good. <laughs> Did we? I don't yeah, remember. Yeah. We do so many episodes. Oh, they're, all, they're all over me. I'm sure none of it was factual in nature. Not at all. <laughs> like Dude, normal. I don't remember. We just get talking, and I don't remember what we talked about. But don't forget our uh, affiliate, guys. If you want to help us out, um, use our B&H photo video affiliate, all your cameras, iPhones, um, audio gear, camera gear. You can get it better than Amazon prices a lot. All your tech stuff mm-hmm. helps put a little fuel in the lab gas tank. We get a small kickback if you make a purchase. No additional cost to you. Don't forget our phone number, 509-731-3548 or lawabidingbiker.com. Oh, there you go. 731-509-731-3548. <laughs> <laughs> Straight from LD. That is our direct listener hotline. Don't forget the email club, lawabidingbiker.com slash email club. Of course, forward slash contact is our contact form there. You can leave it right from your computer there, guys. Yep, your computer microphone. You can leave us a voicemail. They sound really great. And we already talked about our ratings in Stitcher or in iTunes. Head over to lawabidingbiker.com. iTunes doesn't cost a thing, guys. Really helped us out. Peace out. Thanks so much. Hope you guys get some riding in.